Hi, my name is Rebecca and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about listing things on eBay and some of the things that I do. And I'm going to talk about five things that I think make a good eBay listing. So let's get into it. What I'm going to do with this video is give a little bit of an example of one of the listings that has sold for me. I'm going to pop the information just here and talk about it as I go along. The first thing I think that is good for an eBay listing is to have a good title. Now you might have a really good item that you want to sell and the title that you put can make or break it. I'm still getting used to writing titles and what to put for certain items. There is so many things to learn because there's certain keywords that you put in your title that will come up when people search. And what I try to do myself is I try and put myself into the position of the buyer and what would I type in if I was looking for a certain item. So there are certain keywords that I try and put into my listings. So when somebody searches those words, then hopefully it should come up on eBay for them. It's about not being too vague with your titles as well, because when I was very new to eBay, what I used to do was, for example, if I was selling, this is something that I did actually, I had like a blue t-shirt I was trying to sell. All I wrote for the title was blue top, blue t-shirt, <laughs> word to that effect. That was it. Put it on eBay and wasn't sure why it wasn't selling. I do put more into my titles now. I'm going to show you with this item that's sold. So this Puma bag sold for me not so long ago. And I'm just going to show you the title that I put for it. I'm not an expert at titles. It's just some of the things that I do. And obviously it's work to get this sale. So this is just the title that I put for this. I started off by putting the brand name there. Then I went on to say that it's a small handbag. I've also put the colour in there and the age of the bag as well. So 1980s, 1990s, like a retro sort of vibe. Certain words people do type in when they're looking for things like this. The same with clothing as well. And it's about what people will search and what will bring this item up. I did put pre-loved on this title. I've stopped doing that because I went through a bit of an experiment to see if this actually worked. And the listings that I've added it on to didn't do as well as the listings that didn't have it on. Now, I know eBay have changed a lot of things recently, and that was something I experimented with. It's not worked very well for me, so I've stopped putting that on my listings. But the title, you want to have words in there that is going to be relevant. I wouldn't recommend saying something that's not relevant to the item you're selling. But what I tend to do is put the brand name of the item. I tend to put the size of the item, the colour. If it's women's clothing, I'll put women's or ladies, top or whatever, and put different abbreviations sometimes. So for t-shirts, I tend to put t-shirts, top, short sleeve top or long sleeve top. Make sure, because I think you've only got 80 characters you can put into the title. You can't get too descriptive, but it's about hitting certain words. I don't know if the order makes a difference, but this has worked for me. And I'm trying to learn a bit more as I go along, but it certainly does work for me this way. But these are the things that I tend to do. If you're a bit too vague, your listing might not get seen. There is a knack to it, and I'm still learning this. The second thing is having good quality pictures. The pictures can make or break your listing. I've seen other people put pictures on eBay. I'm not talking about resellers. This is just people who don't do reselling. It's more so people who are just having a bit of a clear out. And I've seen pictures on eBay where they've been quite blurry and you can't really tell what the item is. It's poor quality, poor lighting and all those sort of things. So with pictures, you want to make sure the item looks good. Give it a bit of a clean. If it's clothing, give it a wash and iron. Make sure it's as good quality as possible. It's not always easy to take photos of clothing especially larger sort of t-shirts i find that sometimes it can be a bit of a challenge but it's worth just doing the best you can with what you've got i haven't got a proper setup for my photographs so what i tend to do is position things where the natural daylight comes in usually when it's a sunnier day now, that being said, I have taken pictures of items when it's been cloudy because the natural daylight, it's quite beneficial. Otherwise, you can use things like a ring light or if you've got a setup, that's perfect. But for, for starting out, I use the natural daylight and just position things in a perfect spot. What I tend to do for clothing is I try and get a white background. So I'll take it in a very lit area of a room. 
then what I tend to do is go on to one of the free apps that you can get, remove the background and have a crisp white background because I think sometimes that can make a difference. I've seen people use like a wood sort of effect background and I think that works really well as well. So if you've got like a wood background, I think that's a really nice touch as well and I think that can work really well. I don't have anything like that, unfortunately, but I use like a white background. This picture that I took here, I don't think these are the best quality pictures in the terms of the light. This picture, I've tried to take pictures at different angles. There's so many pictures that eBay do let you take. So I think it's important to try and utilise that as much as possible and give different angles of what you're taking. Don't take pictures unnecessarily. <laughs> I like to take pictures of anything like any damage anything like that i also like to take pictures of the label so it shows the sizing the material the brand i took this picture on a chest of drawers so the lighting isn't too bad but i don't think it's as good as it can be because some days it's a little bit brighter i haven't got a proper lighting setup at the moment but it's something i'm gonna work towards getting and I try and take pictures of different angles of the item as well so it looks better for the buyer so potentially they might think about buying it so that's personal preference with what i do i try and utilize as many pictures as possible as well because i think sometimes the pictures can make a massive difference the third thing is to put the item in the correct category and fill in item specifics i try and fill out all the boxes on ebay for the item specifics just so it gives the better chance of if somebody's typed in one of those words, then hopefully it will come up when they're searching. I wouldn't put anything in that's not relevant to the item, but things that are relevant that you can fill in, I tend to do that as much as possible. Sometimes there are boxes that I don't know what to write or it's not applicable, so I won't fill it in, but the majority of them I do try to fill in. And putting the item in the correct category, that can make a massive difference. That can make a difference whether your item is seen or not. And that can make a difference whether the item sells. I've made this mistake in the past where when I was very new to reselling, I there was one item that wasn't getting any views at all. And when I went to look into the details of it, I'd put it under the wrong category. And I realised why it wasn't getting any views, because it was in the wrong category and it was... A category that was not appropriate at all for that item what i did from that is change it and then eventually i got the views and it was okay sometimes it's important to just check that the category is correct sometimes ebay fills it in automatically but if you're looking at items for comps and you've clicked on somebody else's item and click sell similar sometimes what they've written in will automatically be put in there so it's always worth checking that I don't do that on anybody else's items anymore where I click on sell similar. I will do an item from scratch. What I was finding is I was missing things when I was going through the description and the item specifics and leaving things in that weren't appropriate. Fortunately, nothing came of it, but I like to start from scratch now so I know where I am. It's a clean slate and if I've made an error, it's on me. It's something that I did learn quite quickly to, to not do. Looking at this one, I've tried to add in as many item specifics as possible. Some things like it comes up as character and I never know what to put for character. But what I tend to do, because it's a style of a sports bag, I've just put sports in it. So I fill in as much as possible. There are obviously going to be item specifics that I can't fill in. But I try and fill in as many as possible just so it gives that better chance of being seen and i put material in as well because i think sometimes some people like to see what material it is because when you're looking online you can't feel the material you can't see it in person so it is hard when you're making a decision like that so if it is an item of clothing or like a bag i try and put the material in as much as possible just so the buyer's aware of what it potentially will look like or feel like the fourth thing is to have a good description now, you don't have to go too overboard with your description. I don't write excessive amounts, like I'm writing an essay for university, <laughs> for example. The description is important. It can paint more of a bigger picture about the item. You can put in anything like if there's any damage to the item, if there's any holes in it, any wear or tear, if it's for spares or repairs, anything like that. I tend to elaborate a little bit more in the description as well, but this is what I tend to put. 
So what happens in the description, eBay will automatically put your title in the description. I tend to keep that and then I'll start writing underneath what I need to. So for example, with this one, what I tend to write is pre-owned. If it's brand new, I'll put brand new tags or whatever. But for the instance of this, it's pre-owned and then I tend to put the condition. So for this, I've put in good condition. Then I'll elaborate a little bit further. So if there's any damage to it or if any, any wear or tear, anything that I want the buyer to be aware of before they purchase the item. So for example, this one, this bag, I did give a good clean when I bought it and it took a while to get it up to a nice sort of standard. When I say I took a while, it took a few hours in the afternoon. I think when I bought this bag, it looks like somebody's had makeup in it and I've had to clean away as much as possible, but there are a few marks in there. So what I did was try and remove that as much as possible. And I've made a note in the description just so it makes them aware. I've also tried to capture this on the pictures just so it gives the buyer the awareness of what they're expecting. Because I find if you don't put that in and then they receive the item and it's got these marks on it, it's going to annoy them if they're expecting something of good quality or if they're expecting it looking new, effectively. It's just a heads up to the buyer so they know what they're going to receive. Then after that, I tend to put the size of the item. So I've put size small and then the approximate sort of measurements as well. If it's clothing, say, for example, a top, what I tend to do is then put the size in of it and then I'll put the armpit to armpit measurement and then the top of the shoulder to the hem. Then I tend to put the material underneath. So this bag is 100% sponge vinyl. I've just copied that from the label. I tend to get a lot of information off the label sometimes and put those in the item specifics and the description. I don't go too overboard because like I say, you're not writing an essay. I think the more information you can put in can make it a bit easier because sometimes people do like quite a lot of information to read. Some people don't. So you will get buyers who will ask questions and they've not read the description. But for the majority, people do like a bit of information. That's my personal experience of what I've witnessed with eBay. And sometimes after that, I tend to put a little bit of an overview about if the item's got anything else, like if it's got additional pockets, or any inside pockets, anything like that. I haven't put anything on with this. It's not necessary. It's just like an overview I tend to do at the bottom there. And then right at the bottom, I just tend to put from a pet free and smoke free home. That's something that I've just always done. You don't have to add it on, but it's something that I tend to do. So for the description, you can go a bit more in depth with things if you wanted to as well especially if it's like a collector's item what i find as well when i first started on ebay with my descriptions this is why i'm a bit more descriptive now i used to get questions about certain items and that for me was a good indicator that i've forgotten to add it onto the listing so now i try and add as much as possible not going overboard but i try and add as much as possible because sometimes you do get questions and sometimes you get questions that you haven't even thought about putting in the description. So I tend to try and put as much as possible in so potential buyers are aware of what they're looking at, really. And the fifth thing is the cost of the item and postage and packaging. This is one that took me a while to get used to. <laughs> When I was new to reselling, postage and packaging was one of those things that I had no idea what I was doing with. I post with Royal Mail and I've got one of those leaflets that tell me the weight of the item, how much it'll cost for certain items, the, the width, the sizing of them. And it tells me the overview of how much it's going to be. Now you can post with whatever courier that you want to use. There's so many out there. I prefer Royal Mail. That's just something I do. But you can go for whoever you want, <laughs> whatever works for you. Go for the cheapest if you want. I tend to go for Royal Mail because touch wood, they've been really good. I've had a good service with them. And the post office I go to, I've built up a bit of a relationship with them. So I know them when I go in and have a bit of a chat. And it's, it's just a really nice service. That's my personal preference. I've never had issues with Royal Mail and that's what I prefer to do. That being said, whatever courier that you do use, it's important just to read research the prices, weigh the items, weigh the items before you list them, 
just so you know how much roughly you're looking at postage size it up now it, it does take time to get used to that it took me a while to get used to that because when i was very new to reselling there were times where i thought oh this will go as a large letter and actually it's a parcel <laughs> it's a small parcel and i ended up just not making any money at all this was more so when i was having a sort out and getting rid of my own stuff and getting the cost right for the item so pricing the item you don't want to put it too high but you don't want to put it too low and looking at comps on ebay is a good one for this so when i'm listing my items just before i put it up i'll do a bit of research around the item and i'll see how much others have gone for if there are anything I'll also sometimes, if, if eBay's not the best at giving information like that, or if I can't find much on eBay, I'll look on Google and just do a search for the item. Google Lens is another good one if you've got an item that you're not sure of, because that can bring up so many search results. Google Lens is fantastic. If you're not sure of what something is, take a picture of it and see what it says. You'll probably get the answer to it. It's great. If not, I type it into Google and you can see then a lot more information and you can see if it's selling anywhere else, how much roughly it goes for. But it is important to try and get the pricing right when you put an item on eBay because you don't want to charge too much and you don't want to charge too little. It's getting the balance right to see what buyers are going to look at and see if they want to buy it. So just a few things that I tend to do when I'm listing my items. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know if you've got any tips and tricks of how you list your items because I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it. It's just my way and I'm still learning at the moment. So there's so much I'm still learning about. I try my best and that's all I can do. <laughs> Thank you if you've watched all this video. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you to everybody liking, subscribing and commenting on my videos. It does mean the world to me. I do try and respond to everybody's comments when I've got a minute as well. It makes me smile the amount of support that everybody's given me. It is really quite sweet of you all. I do appreciate all of it. So thank you so much. I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you're all doing well. Take care and I'll see you on my next video.